for anyone who's interested in actually seeing what it's like to deploy a model, you can at any time head to bit.ly slash algo dev, A-L-G-O-D-E-V. And then just click on digit recognition in that repository. I've got a full readme there where you can walk along and perform every step that I'm about to and actually deploy a copy of a demo model right away. So this is what that actual repo looks like. You can see there's that readme in there telling you everything you need to do. But it's pretty simple to actually deploy your model. So what I've done here is I've pre-trained a, a pretty small and frankly pretty poor digit classifier model. This is just for demo purposes. Don't expect it to be to perform well and don't use this specific model in your production environments. You won't be happy with the results. But what this model does is this model takes an image which contains a digit, so say a handwritten one or two, and then it predicts what the actual number value is inside that image. To deploy, all we have to do is download the classifier itself, the pickle file, the serialized scikit-learn model, then go into algorithmia.com, and we have a hosted data facility where you can upload your models into. So if I click on data, and then click on my hosted data, that gives me basically a directory and file browser. Now these are all securely hosted files on our servers. I can create a new collection here. So I'm just gonna call this one demo. And then I can simply upload any files I want. So I'm gonna take that pickle file that I just pulled down and I'm gonna drop that right in. And boom, now I've uploaded my model file into Algorithmia's servers. Now note that right underneath, you get a little file handle and this is simply the identifier for where that file is actually stored. So data, demo, algo, demo, digits classifier. All right, I'm gonna copy that URL. The next thing I do is I go back to algorithmia.com and I click this plus to create a new algorithm. This is my entry point for that interface you saw before where I simply am gonna have some algorithm name. I'm gonna call this digits classifier one. Um, I'm going to be writing in Python 3 today, um, and uh, as it is, I'm going to make this one open source. I wouldn't have to. I could make it closed source to the world. I'm going to give it full internet access, so somebody could give it the URL of a public image somewhere on the internet that they wanted to recognize, uh, and uh, I'm going to give it advanced GPU and hit create algorithm. And then again, I could get cloned down and use my own IDE, but I'm just going to step into the web IDE for now since it's going to be some very simple code. I'm just going to make a little comment for myself here to remember where I put that model file. And then I've actually got all of the code written out for you, though it is pretty darn simple. Uh, if I look at my actual algorithm here, all that it does is it imports the algorithmia libraries, imports scikit-learn, and pillow, the image manipulation library in Python, uh, and numpy, of course. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up that model file from wherever I stored it using joblib. And all of this occurs before anyone ever comes in and executes my API. So this is simply preloading, giving the model file ready to go. It's just deserializing the model and making it ready in memory. When somebody actually goes and executes my API, this is where they end up coming in. Now, even though they've sent JSON, I don't have to do any JSON serialization inside my serverless function. The framework takes care of all of that for me. From my point of view, whatever comes in is simply gonna be a Python object. In this particular case, it's gonna be the URL of an image somewhere that I'm actually gonna go and recognize. I'm using a little tool here called Smart Image Downloader. And what that does is just make sure that whenever I bring in an image, if there's something like a JavaScript protection wrapper around that image, or somebody's accidentally given me the HTML page that surrounds an image instead of the image file itself, Smart Image Downloader is just one of those many useful utilities in our system that looks at that and says, oh, they didn't actually mean the HTML page. They meant the image which is in the HTML page. So it just goes and it grabs that image itself and sends it back to me. 
So this is not necessary if you were just sending it raw image URLs, which actually went to the image file, but I've added this in for safety in case somebody does something like sends me an imagery URL, which contains the HTML wrapper. This will bury through underneath and get it. And we've got lots of useful utilities in our system like that for different purposes. And part of the power of our system is of course being able to use those immediately directly from whatever serverless function you're creating. From there, it's really simple. All I do is I grab the image file, I open it up, I resize it to eight by eight and grayscale it because my model was trained on eight by eight grayscale images. Then I do the prediction and I simply return the integer which the model predicted. Again, the person utilizing this function is sending and receiving JSON, but I don't have to worry about that. I just simply return any valid Python object and the framework is gonna automatically take care of serializing that for me. All right, so I can simply copy this code I'm gonna paste it right here into my algorithm. And the only thing I need to change is just where I actually put that model file. So I'm copying that URL where I saved the model file and I'm putting that in right here. From there, the very last step is simply making sure that I have the right dependencies file. Now this is pretty simple. I just use pillow and numpy, but I've put a requirements text in here just so you can see what those actual dependencies are. So we're using the current version of the algorithm, the library, and I've actually specified here specific versions of NumPy, Pillow, and Scikit-Learn. It's just a standard requirements file. You could, of course, be using just the most recent versions if you expect your code to always be forward compatible, but I like to version lock things when I create them for safety. I hit dependencies over here and simply paste in those requirements. That's it. Hit save dependencies and everything's ready to go. I hit compile, and of course, Python's not a compiled language, but what the compile button does in this case is it simply prepares the serverless function for injection into our system so that it can be run from anywhere. It's gonna go ahead, it's gonna provision whatever it needs in order to make that available, and that's gonna give me a little notice that it's ready to go. All right, lastly, I'm gonna test this out before I actually publish it. So looking in the readme here, I've actually just put the URL of a image out there um, so that you can test it out quickly. If we look at that actual image, it's simply an image of a you know uh, low resolution one drawn out in the image, right? So I'm gonna paste that right in here to test this out. It goes ahead, it executes my model, and it gives me back a prediction. So how well did my model perform? One, excellent, very good. Okay, so I'm satisfied that that works. And we can see that that first load took a little bit longer, but after that, it's extremely fast. It almost immediately returns each time. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish. I'm gonna put in some release notes here saying what it is and what I've done. I can put in some sample input here so that other people coming in and looking at it know what kind of input to expect. And I can set up what kind of versioning I want, whether I want it to be public, usable by anyone, or private, only visible to me. In this particular case, I'm gonna make it public. And lastly, something you might use if you do release a lot of public algorithms, uh, you can, if you want, earn a royalty on each call to your algorithm. So I'm gonna publish this algorithm out there, but if other people come along and run that model, I don't pay for the execution of that model, they're paying for the execution of that model because they're the ones running it. Furthermore, if I put in a royalty here, I get a little credit kickback every time somebody else executes that. In this particular case, it's such a trivial model, there's no point in monetizing it, so I'm gonna put zero credits per call, and I'm gonna publish that out there. As soon as I do that, I get this web page, which describes my algorithm. I can go in and I can edit this, uh, turn, an image into a number. Or I can add more complicated documentation here if I want. I've got the option of putting in sort of a full markdown file describing what it is. But then people have that sample here which they can go ahead and execute it or they can change this and execute it on a different number if they wanted, that would be just fine. But also down here at the bottom, they have boilerplate code that they can cut and paste in any language they want and simply dump it into their code base. So I could, for example, simply call this from curl uh, from a command prompt and it's gonna go out and it's gonna remotely execute that and return the results right back to my machine. So there we go. 
Similarly, I could grab, say, my Python code, I could copy that into my local Python script, or I could be developing a web page and simply copy this client-side JavaScript to execute inside my web page. All right, so that should pretty much wrap us up. Thanks very much for coming along with me.